Gas is closing on your position. Suggest you get moving. so much RGB. It's blinding me and it won't make you any better. Well, actually, there are several studies that show how light and color affect mood and performance. See Kaplan and Kaplan 1998. Plus, with my RGB keyboard, I can highlight specific layers and keys to be faster than you. Also, it's freaking awesome, just like me. Hello, digmates. I'm Dominique, and today we're going to shine some light on how we develop the underglow and backlight of this radiant beauty, the Digma Defy. As a company that has its roots in gaming, RGB has always been a key feature in our keyboards. Even though RGB is frowned upon by some members of the keyboard community, it's so much more than just showing off. As previously mentioned by the smart girl in the lab coat, the per-key backlight can help highlight specific keys like arrows and shortcuts, and the underglow helps you instantly know which layer you're on without even looking at the keyboard. That's why we wanted the Digma Defy to have the best RGB lighting, period. That means precise per-key backlight and blinding underglow. To accomplish the most accurate colors, the Digma Defy uses RGBW LEDs, which seems as easy as going to an electronics store and asking, hey, can I have some RGBW LEDs instead of RGB, please? But it's not. It has given our engineers all kinds of headaches, most especially when our CEO, Luis, promised to have that feature in a live Q&A. <laughs> Thanks, Louise. Let's start with the underglow, which is the light surrounding the base of the keyboard. Our first board, the Digma Rays, used an ingenious pipe system that allowed light to travel from the LEDs placed on the PCB to every corner of the keyboard. However, as proud as we are of the Digma Rays underglow, we knew from the start that it wouldn't work for the Digma Defy. Why? The Defy has wireless capabilities and a built-in tenting, which means the body is full of PCBs, tenting legs, and batteries that would get in the way of the light pipes. We had to redesign this from scratch. So we put our lab coats and glasses back on to feel smarter and got to work. One of the first thing we had to consider was that both the underglow and the tenting legs needed to be placed as close to the perimeter as possible. For the underglow, this would ensure that nothing would get in the way of the light. And for the tenting legs, having them close to the perimeter makes the keyboard more stable while tented. We also envisioned the new underglow to be brighter and more evenly distributed, and with precise colors too, which meant we needed RGBW LEDs instead of regular RGB. Regular RGB LEDs have three bulbs, red, green, and blue, which can create around 6,777,216 colors. However, they struggle to represent a neutral white as the color white is a combination of the three RGB colors. And any imprecision leads to a bluish, reddish, or greenish white. On the other hand, RGBW LEDs have an extra white bulb, hence the W. That makes them more color precise. Yay! But quite a bit more expensive and especially difficult to find. Aww. Finally, we wanted the underglow to be an optional extra, so it should be independent from the backlight of the keys. The first concept was based on a flexible LED strip. It was placed around the perimeter and it gave even light for all the diffuser. And this was also a good solution because it was quite thin and it gave us enough room for the tenting legs, so we have like space for everything. But there was a massive problem with this solution. Around the corners and near the thumb keys where the keyboard narrows, there wasn't enough space. With the first option gone, we considered what we call the PCB islands. This solution consisted in a series of small PCBs with LED clusters. These were strategically placed around the perimeter between the tenting legs hole. We then used diffusers to distribute 
uh, the light evenly. However, this solution requires like a lot of connections between the different PCBs. It affects the price and also makes it more difficult to assemble. Okay, so then what? All these ideas use a standard RGBW LEDs, controlled by an LED driver that determines the intensity of its tone, like red, green, blue, and white. If you have an LED strip with only one driver, all the LEDs in the strip will display the same color. If you want each LED to have a different color, you need to address each one individually, requiring a bigger chip and more space and connections. And as you've seen, we don't have a lot of wiggle room in the keyboard. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. The solution, addressable LEDs. Each addressable LED, also called ARGB or smart light, has a microcontroller of its own which removes the need for an LED driver. They are much more expensive, but we decided to absorb the cost. Removing the LED drivers helped solve the fitting issue. We could now place an ARGBW strip, oh, that's a mouthful, around the perimeter, making it much easier to have an evenly lit underglow. From a mechanical standpoint, this solution worked. Being just 16 millimeters wide, the strip leaves enough space for the tenting legs and all the other elements that need to go into the base, like the wireless neuron, the RF PCBs and the batteries. However, we still need to fine-tune the light distribution to move a little the LEDs to avoid dark spots or burn spots on the diffuser. We tried countless combinations of the amount, direction, position of the LEDs to achieve the perfect lighting. In the end, we settled on 53 side-mounted addressable RGBW LEDs on each side of the keyboard, total 106 LEDs, surrounded by an ABS diffuser to help with the light distribution. We are delighted with this solution, although we're still tweaking the material composition of that diffuser to let as much light through as possible without having any dark or burn spots. Well, you might not see them, but our CEO Luis has Legolas eyesight, so we had to fix them. Another interesting thing I would like to point out is that we replaced the cable connection between the underglow and the main PCB with a pogo pin. So it makes much easier to connect the underglow to the main PCB, just putting it in contact. And now it's totally connected and it's working. That way, there's one less cable to worry about and we reduce a lot the potential quality issues. Finally, I wanted to tell you about something that might seem minor but shows how everything is interconnected in this product. While testing the tenting legs, we found that the keyboards that had underglow were more stable than those without underglow. After closer examination, we realized that the underglow PCB added rigidity to the edges of the keyboard and the base, which prevented micro movements on the legs and the subsequent wobble. The solution? Add a fake plastic PCB to the keyboards without underglow. Uh, we're still figuring out exactly what type of plastic, but you get the idea. Ah! By the way, if you're wondering what happens with the diffuser when you get it without the underglow, it'll be black for the black defy and translucent for the silver defy. Let's now move to the per-key backlight development. Unlike the underglow, we thought we could replicate the design on the Digma rays and call it a day. Spoiler alert, we couldn't. The Digma rays has reverse-mounted RGB LEDs, which means they are soldered from the bottom of the PCB. We thought we simply had to replace the LEDs with RGBW LEDs, but reality always loved to kick you in your face. Reverse-mounted RGBW LEDs don't exist, or at least not in the size suitable for a keyboard. Our engineers searched everywhere and nothing. We could only find top-mounted RGBW LEDs. Well, use those, you'd say. The thing is, reverse-mounted LEDs have two very big advantages. They help prevent the switches from hitting and damaging the LEDs because you touch first the PCB, and you only need to assemble the PCB from one side, making manufacturing much more cost-effective. Plus, we have to consider the added height of having LEDs on top of your PCB instead of underneath. I guess that explains why we haven't found any production keyboard with RGBW backlight. If you know of any, let us know in the comments below. So what were our options? Well, we could give up on the W and take the L, 
or try to engineer our way into using top-mounted RGBW LEDs. You know damn well which option we chose. When we decided to add the surface-mounted LEDs, we faced one challenge. Adding something, any, any LED to the top of the PCB, increased the thickness of the PCB, and that directly increases the thickness of the keyboard, and we didn't want that. So what we had to do is to reduce the thickness of the only piece we could make room with, the main key scanner PCB this PCB. We reduced that from 1.6 to 1 mm thick. That might seem easy, but that PCB was already pretty thin, only 1.6 mm. And we had put a lot of work into it. We had even made manufacturing samples and all. Now we had room for the LEDs without thickening the keyboard and we prevented the bottom of the switches from hitting the LEDs. We even added a 0.6 mm felt layer for extra protection of the LED and also for sound dampening. And it feels really great. These changes made the PCB more expensive and a bit more complex to manufacture. Now you have to assemble components on both sides instead of only one, but having RGBW LEDs, worth it. Developing the RGBW underglow and backlight of the Digma Defy has been an intense journey. Still, it has taught us much about LEDs, plastic coloring, the assembly process, PCBs, and batteries. But we'll talk about those another day. If you have any questions about this or any other parts of the keyboard, feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Until then, it's lights out and away we go!